day I'm starting off with some chest and back warming up with some flies the gym is relatively empty it's rainy outside and it's Sunday night and Sunday nights are usually the least crowded days um, I really didn't want to come today the weather was super gloomy I've been feeling drowsy and sore wanted to go to bed uh, actually took a two-hour nap but we made it here starting off with flies and then going to go into uh, some sort of pull downs it looks like it feels like the music here is loud today and I really hope I don't have copyright strike problems when I have to upload this shit I'm supersetting it with alternate pull downs uh, kind of at an angle my legs feel really sore today but I still want to do sled but we'll see my legs feel extremely sore today but I still want to get some sled in so that's probably what I'm gonna do next also another thing that I've noticed is although Sunday is the best day to record because there's the fewest number of people they also play music at the loudest and as a result it is very likely that at some point during this video there will be enough music and enough open space when I'm not talking to where YouTube is gonna recognize it and be like ah we detected copyright work I mean it doesn't really affect anything too much at the moment apparently but still I like to pretend as if it will be a problem someday With chest and back, I like to focus a lot on getting a pump initially before With the flies, I'm doing alternate and trying to come at an angle uh, that's like with my palm facing down. Um, that hits the lower chest a little bit more, and that's kind of what I'm going for, like to kind of stretch the outline of the chest. And then once those fibers hit, some sort of uh, or like get exhausted, I go overhand lean forward to get a full stretch of the upper chest and then <sighs> again I'm playing around with tempos and not really keeping a specific rep range I'm going alternate for now but now I'm thinking about switching to single double single double but now I'm going to keep them both outstretched and then I'll, the starting position of the fly will instead now be in the outstretched position where usually you would have them both out but anyway just playing around with all these variations <sighs> coming down at different angles <sighs> get all the 
fibers of the chest firing. So here I have my palms facing up, and then switch them to palms facing down. Move your hand around to get a better stretch. Like even now, the way I have my hands through the handle, it gives a different feeling than if I were holding the hand. And so I keep the weight light enough so that I can move through all these angles effortlessly, but still doing flies to keep blood going into the chest. You might be able to further isolate the rhomboids by having an underhand grip. So after I've done a bunch of flies and rows and stuff on the cable machine and I have blood going into my muscles I like to then do my compound movements today I'm trying to do a more quote-unquote functional chest and back workout so it's not so immediate but this is my third set I'm doing five sets total I'm going for five reps each hand but getting a pause at the bottom it forces you to have to keep your core super stable and also you're not bouncing the weight you're getting a full stretch of the chest One more set. seeing stars. That's it for this. 
Time for something new. So for the second chest movement, I'm doing dumbbell curl to presses, uh, or kettlebell curl to presses. It forces the biceps, upper chest, shoulders, triceps, and core to all work in unison core because there is an offset uh, when you're doing one arm at a time uh, the biceps when you're curling and pressing and triceps and shoulders are also involved as a result of it being a press I'm using 25 pound kettlebells I'm going for 8 reps each hand This is my fourth set. I'm going for five sets in total, same as in the previous exercise. Keeping with the functional theme of today's workout, I'm trying to incorporate as many muscle groups as possible within an exercise while keeping the chest and the back, the main uh, muscles targeted during the exercise. And here, even though a bicep is involved in the curl, the primary movement still in my mind is the press, and I'm able to get my chest involved as well. Then I go straight into a deadlift, a staggered deadlift, and a row, and that's one. And that's two that's three that's four then switch legs and the same thing By keeping, uh, by keeping the movements compound in nature, it recruits a lot of different muscle groups and forces the uh, heart to beat a lot faster, keeping the cardio rate high, keeping the heart rate high. Um, also by throwing in stuff like a deadlift and a row at the same time and doing curl to presses, it breaks the norm of a traditional chest back workout. And uh, just a different way of doing chest and back so first it was sled rows and now it was this um, I'll probably do one more functional style movement and then move into something else for my next movement my next exercise I'm doing seal rows I find seal rows to be the best to isolate the thickness of the overall back it takes any swaying uh, out of the motion and forces you to only use your back I'm letting the kettlebells come to a dead stop I'm tightening all my muscles and feeling tension and then I'm trying to get a good row squeeze it for a second feel all the striation and then come back down <sighs> going for 8 to 10 and then supersetting that with push-ups and then incline just to keep blood going into the muscles and also keep the heart rate up here's another angle of the seal rose
Then immediately going into the push up. On this set, I'm gonna do alternate so that I can focus on one one lat at a time. Pay attention over here. I don't know if it's clear through the shirt, but that's what I'm focusing on. trying to focus on getting the lines in the lower back area in the Christmas tree. I mean, it's almost Christmas and I gotta have a Christmas tree for the holidays. <clears throat> And even if it's half reps, just keep going. Sometimes that's all you need to have these sets where you're just squeezing every last drop out of the muscle. Push up. So recently, I've decided to get into neck training and I bought this contraption, the, it's called an iron neck. So I'm starting off with, I guess, some neck raises on the cable machine. So this is to kind of get neck extension so since we're always hunched over the muscles that bring your chin down I believe are usually overdeveloped compared to the other muscles so I'm going to focus a lot of my volume on neck extensions I think that's what's there that's what they're probably called and then after that I'm going to do neck rotations so the neck can rotate that way and this way so first I'm going to target looking to the left so this is the stretch position this is where there's no resistance and then I'm looking this way against resistance. I'm going to do about 10 each side. So this is my first time really training neck and I'm just being aware of the different motions that are permissible to the neck. One of them is neck extension which I train in the first movement and then the other one is neck rotation which is what I'm training in the second movement. Or, yeah. Then there is lateral flexion, which is what I'll target after this.
So this thing has a clip or a place to clip on the right side and on the left too. So now I'm gonna target left side lateral flexion. So that's, you try to fully stretch out. This way have the cable pull your neck out that way. And then, We're essentially trying to get the uh, opposing side ear to touch the shoulder. So I'm having here, mentally, I feel like a slight tug in the traps on the upper side and then the neck muscles and I'm kind of leaning into it so that the cable can pull my neck out almost. And then I'm flexing, laterally flexing my neck to get the ear to touch the shoulder. resistance as well. So I'm quad setting these four movements as my first neck training exercise or neck training uh, superset or circuit or whatever. I'm going to do four sets of this and then I'm going to do some pullovers. So after doing a bunch of neck and uh, the three chest back exercises. I'm trying to open up my quote unquote, or what people like to call the thoracic spine. I'm just opening up my upper body and upper chest area. Modern society or modern life forces us to be hunched over so much I don't need to do movements like pullovers to get the muscles that oh, muscle like the serratus more attention so that the upper chest can stay open and not closed up and, hun and the back hunched over. Ever since focusing a lot on pullovers uh, and cable good mornings, I've noticed a huge improvement in just the way I move and feel throughout the day. And I'm hoping that by including neck training, it takes this whole feeling good thing to a new level. sled back and then come back the other way. So I got a little carried away. I was, I don't know, I felt really bloated, really fat and uh, something inside me kicked in and I was like, uh, you're going to work up a really bad sweat. 
and you're gonna go intense before you go home. So, so one thing led to the other. I did a bunch of sled movements that I really didn't plan for, or I don't usually plan at all, but definitely didn't plan for this. But the point being, I'm in the middle of it now, and I've been doing some pretty interesting stuff, so I thought I'd record some of it. So, keeping with the Tom Havlin theme of things, I'm doing a farmer's carry and a sled drag on the other hand. not really sure what muscles are working but I know some muscles are working and I'm sweating like hell and right now that's all that matters That was for real the last one. I'm gonna take a shower and head out of here. That's all for today's workout. See you in the next one.